we've really appreciated the work and dedication, Chancellor Zimfra, that you've uh, put into running the largest higher education system in the country. Uh, we know that it's not always easy. Uh, we know that the work that you do is hard, but you, in the time that you've been here, uh, you've kept engaged at it, and we certainly appreciate uh, all the sincere and honest work that you've put forward and trying to make us the most inclusive state system of higher education in the country. We really appreciate it. So at this time, I would like to present the sixth annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Leadership Award to our esteemed chancellor, Nancy Zimfer. It's all right with Kevin and Mark. They promised me a few minutes to say thank you. Those who work very closely with me know that in an emotional moment like this, I almost never stay with the script. So with all the preparation in the world, I'm going to really speak from my heart. I am proud to be at Downstate Medical Center. Your commitment to diversity, your commitment to the common good, your commitment to health care is a profound model for all of us. You are big, you are important, you are critical to the health care not only of this community, Brooklyn, New York City, New York State, but you set a model for the country. And not everybody knows that you were really a part of the founding of the State University of New York. Because not everybody in this state could get admission to a medical school. I never want people to forget that that was the foundation for the State University of New York and it started right here at Downstate Medical Center. So you gotta give yourself a round of applause for that. So, you have a great team, and it will, as Chairman McCall for, foreshadowed, be enhanced in a couple of days when the State University of New York Board of Trustees meets to name and announce the new president of Downstate Medical Center. So watch closely Tuesday, Wednesday, when the bon big moment occurs, but I agree with the chair. This was a fabulous search, and I want to thank all of you for the very hard work that you did. Congratulations. Now, the other thing is, I'm here, with, I'm here with a fabulous team from the State University of New York. You have no idea what a privilege it is to work side by side with Chairman H. Carl McCall, except that you do know that. You know him, you've known him, you see his leadership every day, so do I, and this partnership is just the highlight of my life. And I will say a little bit more about what we do together, but I want to thank Chairman McCall and the team from SUNY Central, who also came here to honor Downstate Medical Center and, of course, Martin Luther King, Jr. For those of you students, I am mature enough, notice I did not say old enough, <laughs> to have lived his life, to have watched and wished I could have been present in those wonderful, moving moments that we saw on the video. So it's really special for us to be here today. For all of you at Downstate, and particularly with the honors received by the Insight into Diversity magazine, and Holly and I know what a great partnership we have together, the magazine and SUNY. The work of Mark Stewart, the work of our interim president, Michael Lucchese, the work of the entire Antoine family. Michael, Natalie, and Kevin, you must be very, very proud. And of course, uh, the, 
the award given to Chandel uh, Moore Goldstein. Uh, Chandel, I don't know what else we can say except job well done. So I too, Kevin, have probably forgotten to thank someone, but that's when I go off script. And now I'm really going to go off script. When there are students in the house, we must speak directly to you. So Chairman McCall and I have cracked the code on how to get things done. We start with a problem. In the case of diversity, the lack of inclusion, the lack of equity. We don't just admire that problem. We convene a group of people to figure out how to fix that problem. And then we take their good words and through the leadership of our Board of Trustees and Chairman McCall, we pass resolutions that require every one of our campuses to follow suit. And that is why we have a diversity policy. That is why we have a chief diversity officer in every one of our campuses. And I did a little checking, Kevin. I said, uh, how was Downstate on meeting the specifics of this new policy? And what I learned was, one of the first ones in the pocket. They couldn't say enough good things about Downstate's response to our diversity policy. So another policy that really is at the core, at the bedrock of the State University of New York is our commitment to educating students. One of the uh, favorite columnists, uh, I read from time to time from the New York Times, uh, David Leonhardt said this three or four or five years ago. I have said it about his statement so many times that people don't even need me to complete it. But what he said was, education, educating more people and educating them better is simply the best bet any society can make. And if there's anything about that dream that speaks to how we reflect the commitment of Martin Luther King Jr., it is probably that statement. So here's how we do it. We created this little formula. And for our students, I really want you to keep this one in mind. So to start with, you have chemistry. You know it's A plus C equals S. OK, got that? A plus C equals S. OK, you got it? A is for access. We have 64 campuses across the entire state of New York. And I'm telling you today, one of those campuses, or several, are waiting for you waiting for you. Don't be afraid to take the, the bus and come upstate, because we have wonderful campuses here in New York City and all over the state. So our commitment to access is to make sure that every one of you sitting here today not only goes to college, but goes to one of our colleges. Is that a deal? If so, stand up and say, we rise. <laughs> OK. Second letter in the formula. You can sit down now. What was the second letter in that formula? Thank you. So what we are learning over many, many years of commitment to diversity is that it's, an, it's not enough for you to go to college. You are there to get a degree, to get a diploma, to walk across the stage. Michael, I don't know how old you were when you were in that little commencement gown with the boutonniere. It was pretty impressive to me. You were graduating from something third grade, fifth grade. We want you to graduate. And we are doing everything in our power, not only to bring you to our campuses, but to graduate you from our campuses. Complete 
C, complete that degree. If you agree with me, stand up and say, we rise. Okay. We're almost home. That last letter. So what we've learned over time, it's not enough to, to open our doors wide and make sure there is a campus for you to make sure you get that degree. But here's where I'm going to hedge my bets. We really would like for you to be gainfully employed. That is, get a job, make some money, live well, raise a family. But some of you will go on to medical school, so we can't exactly say that when you get that degree, you got to go get a job, because many of you, we hope, will come right here to Downstate Medical Center and become a doctor an allied health professional, a nurse, or, a nurse or a social worker right here on this campus. So if you buy this notion of access equals completion to get you a successful career path, stand up one last time and say, we rise. We rise. Thank you. Now I want to say, on behalf of the 465,000 students who are enrolled at SUNY, the 90,000 faculty and staff who make education happen, and the 3 million alumni who have the benefit of a SUNY degree, I am humbled and honored to be in the company of the namesake of Martin Luther King Jr., to join the first recipient of this award at Downstate, my chair, Carl McCall, and to join all of you in following that dream. Thank you very, very much. Concludes, that concludes our sixth annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Leadership Award Program. We want to thank everybody for coming.